The Idaho Batholith runs north and south along central Idaho and the Panhandle. It is comprised of three lobes, the Atlanta Lobe, the Bitterroot Lobe, and the Canusu Lobe. The western margin of the Atlanta Lobe is strongly folded and metamorphosed into Nysic rock, which are well exposed near McCall. The largest plutone mapped to date is Quartz Mononzite in the vicinity of Warm Lake. It is about 124 miles in the north-south direction and more than 30 miles wide. However, many of the areas of the Batholith have not been delineated by geologic mapping. The granitic rocks of the Idaho Batholith formed during late Cretaceous compression events. At this time, the dense oceanic Farallon plate was subducted beneath the more buoyant continental North American plate. The oceanic crust was subducted into the lithosphere until heat, pressure, and slab dewatering in this melting and the superheating of watering was also subducting, forming basaltic magma chambers. These chambers rose up through the lithosphere because of differences in buoyancy. They then caused partial melting of overlying continental crust to form a melt of granitic composition. The magma body stopped approximately 4 to 25 kilometers below the surface and cooled slowly, according to Lewis. The magma then crystallized into granites and granodiorites of the Idaho Batholith. This process included many small magma bodies that formed one large mass when they coalesced. Cooling of the magma bodies over different rates and with different timing produced many different crystalline rock types and textures. Three of the main geologic features that comprise Idaho Batholith are the three lobes. They are referred to as the Atlanta Lobe, the Kinixu Lobe, and the Bitterroot Lobe. Some people call the northern part of the hourglass the Bitterroot Lobe, and the boundary between the Mesozoic and Paleozoic eutroclinal accredited rocks on the west with the continental Precambrian rocks on the east side, the southern part of the lobe, which is also known as the Atlanta Lobe. Many scientists have proposed that the most southern part of the lobe was in, in place 75 to 100 million years ago, or the late Cretaceous period, whereas the northern lobe was in place 70 to 80 million years ago. Armstrong noted that other plutons of Jurassic age occur on the northwest side of the Bitterroot lobe, and many years seen plutons have intruded the eastern side of the Atlanta lobe of the Idaho batholith. On the western side of the batholith, there are more mafic plutons, quartz diorites, or tonalities than to the east. Radiometric dates and field relationships where plutons of the batholith cut older rocks restrict the age of the Idaho batholith to an interval between 180 million years ago, the late Triassic period, to 45 million years ago, the Eocene period. However, the dominant interval of emplacement was early to middle Cretaceous. The borders of a few large separate intrusions have been par partly documented, especially in the interior of the Bitterroot Lobe, but for most of the Batholith, separate major bodies are as yet unknown. Foliation in the western tunnelitic border zone of both lobes dips 50 to 70 degrees eastward under the Batholith. To the east in the main body of the Batholith, the foliation weakens and gradually arches to nearly horizontal in the interior. Southwestern and northeastern border zones of the deeper northern part of the batholith are marked by large alternating sheets of granitic and high-grade country rocks. Large tabular or contorted inclusions and nebulous schlaren are abundant towards the interior. The Idaho batholith is fundamentally different from other major batholiths of the North American Cordera. It is dominated by paraluminous granites and in place entirely in Precambrian continental crust. In contrast, the other Cordera batholiths are characterized by metaluminous compositions and are in place mostly in accredited juvenile crust. The Idaho batholith was in place primarily into the Mesoproterozoic and Neoproterozoic mesosedimentary rocks. The nature of the underlying crystalline basement is poorly understood and has been described as Paleoproterozoic composite terrain. The cellway is defined as a collage of arc-like terrains and, more recently, new exposures of meta-igneous basement 
have been identified just north of the Idaho batholith. Archean and crustal blocks are present to the south of the batholith beneath the Snake River Plain and to the north exposed to the Priest River Complex, but the exact location of boundaries are not known. One little known fact about Idaho's batholith is that it can also be called an incubator of precious metals. Gold is what catapulted Idaho onto the national spotlight way back in the 1860s, 30 years before it became a state. Early prospectors found gold in stream beds and river gravels. Later they realized gold is associated with rocks formed in those tectonic collisions zones directly under Idaho. It's still a pretty safe bet that you'll find gold along what's called the Trans Chalice Fault. This is a zone of faults and igneous dikes many miles wide extending southwestward across the state from the Chalice Salmon area toward the old gold campus of Idaho City and Silver City. Why nature chose to concentrate gold along that trend is still a geologic mystery. The state of Idaho is home to some of the most breathtaking displays of untouched wilderness in the entire United States. The Idaho Batholith is a fine example of the wondrous landscape the state provides and is home to a variety of geological features that are still being studied today. The mix of rock, minerals, rugged landscape, and expansive area that the Idaho Batholith extends provides a great opportunity for geologists and avid outdoorists alike to enjoy and marvel at one of the state's greatest geographic locations. This video is brought to you by Hayden Fitty, Cody Miller, and Patrick Van Papagan. We hope you had as much fun watching as we had making it, and hopefully get a chance to enjoy the great outdoors of Idaho and a chance to see the Idaho Batholith. Thank you very much. I am right.